Welcome to the Dumb Idea Podcast Show with Mike and Alex. We thank you for joining us as we have a couple of beers and a cigar and talk about what's going on in our lives. Grab an adult beverage and a smoke and settle in with us. Please like, subscribe, and comment on each show so we can hear whether you agree or disagree with our take on things. Listen wherever your favorite podcasts are and at www.dumbideapodcast.com. So I was talking to a friend of mine uh, from work the other day uh, about his son who plays baseball. He's playing Division Three ball. Kid lived and breathed baseball, and it, it, it's kind of a bummer because he uh, is unable to watch his kid play his last baseball season because of COVID. And that's a whole other can of worms that maybe we can unpack later. But in any case, um, his son lived and breathed the sport, played baseball off from when he was a little guy, up through T-ball, Little League, high school ball, Legion ball, and, uh, you know, he's a pretty good ball player, ended up playing in, uh, in college. So, but it got to me thinking about the kids that, that we play, that my kids play with. I have little guys too. And how crazy people get over sports and the money that people are putting into this. And, and just going down a, a, uh, a rabbit hole, uh, looking at these things, found, came across uh, showcase camps, which are unbelievably expensive in some cases five thousand dollars for a showcase travel team um where you get to you pay for exposure to get to uh be seen by college and pro scouts and i just wonder if this is something that is is actually worth it i think it's been going on for longer than we know i i'd say that this is probably at least 15 years in the making so even with Someone like me who came up um, in the lacrosse scene. Nowadays, it's very similar to that kind of atmosphere where, you know, playing on your rec or club team or on the county, in the county league, isn't enough. Mm-hmm. Where now parents are paying, it, it, it's got to be between $800 and $1,500 dollars to go play on these travel teams yep. for Exactly what you said. Exposure. Yeah. But I'm a I'm of the position of your eight year old. Yeah. Your twelve year old. Yep. Doesn't need exposure. No. What do they need exposure to? No. They need to learn how to play the game. Yeah. And they need to enjoy it. Yeah. Because here's the thing: if your kid is playing on one of these travel teams and just has an awful time. Mm-hmm. Or let's say just not good enough to play. It yeah, just sits on the bench. Just sits on the bench. Again, this is an eight to twelve year old kid. You don't know how this how this child's gonna play when they're sixteen, right. eighteen. Yep. You're gonna take the enjoyment out of this yeah. for a kid. And yeah, I, I'm just not really sure what some parents are thinking. Yeah, I I I often you know especially and you didn't think it would happen this young. And, you know, um, when you watch these, the way some of these parents behave and they, they are, it, it's their, whether they're living vicariously through their kids or they think this is going to guarantee their future, but you watch them, the, the kids and, and you, you see them, they just don't look happy doing it. And I played hockey when I was growing up, I played football i played uh lacrosse i wasn't very good at, at that i played football in college at, at division three and you know it's a different world in college but it should have been fun it should be fun for the kids because I, I can tell you and when you get to that college level it stops being as fun because yeah. it becomes a it becomes a job it is it's, it's, it's yeah. definitely a job especially on top of your school yeah it, it's not like it's not like everyone's make college sports isn't what everyone makes it out to be. It's not college football. It's not Division One college football. It's yeah. not Division One college basketball. Yeah, which are essentially pros. I mean, they're flying they, on private jets. They yeah. have, they're all well taken care of at yeah. that high level. Every other college athlete is living in the same dorms as everybody else, yep. eating the same food, doing yep. the same stuff. Oh, and by the way, you go to practice every day at four. Yeah, and 
the athletic department makes you sit down with a tutor every day. Yeah. Until your grades are up to snuff. Yep. And up to snuff is like 3.4 and above. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're right. It, every other kid that isn't like at the University of Alabama. Right. Playing D1 football, who if you're the third string cornerback, you're going to the NFL. Yeah. You you got a job. Yeah. And it's and the, the level of commitment that the D3 athletes have to put into it is the same level of commitment that the D1 athletes put into it. Absolutely. And it, it's not, you know, my Division three football coach was not, you know, like, oh, you guys take the day off. We're just D3. No, we work just as hard um, as the as the, the D1 players did. We weren't as big nor were we as fast as I learned when we, we visited uh, a, a big D1 program that – that uh, the the two coaches knew each other, so so we went down and talked about getting uh, getting blown away. Um, you think you're you're big when you're in high school, and you go to college, you're like not that big, and then you go from a D three team to a D one team, like oh wow, I'm really not that big, nor am I that fast, or am I that good? But are we forcing this on our kids too early? Because I only played college football for one season because it wasn't fun it wasn't the high school game and the high school game is a commitment too but you're still a kid in high school you're still doing kid in high school things you're still playing other sports but in college like no i wasn't i wasn't a dual sport athlete and if you were a dual sport athlete you were there playing a sport that complemented football so we had guys that played football and ran track because they complement each other and Hey, I I wanted to play hockey too. Nope. Number one, it conflicts with football. Number two, it doesn't help you with football. So no, you're not you're not playing that. So now we have people that are forcing their kids at such early ages to pick a sport, and that's your sport. So and I've got a unique story about this because now back when I was growing up, these club and travel teams weren't a very big thing. But let's say that they were. Mm -hmm. All right, I grew up playing baseball. Yeah. Loved playing baseball. It was my number one sport. Loved it. And by the time I got to high school, I started playing football because mm -hmm. my parents would finally let me play. Yeah. Um, and I tried out for the baseball team in the in, in the spring season. I was not good enough. Mm -hmm. I got cut my freshman year. I got cut my sophomore year. Yeah. My junior year, I'm like, all right, I'm not, this obviously isn't going to happen for me. A buddy of mine who mm -hmm. I was in homeroom with, uh, first week of lacrosse season had, had gone by, and the junior varsity team uh, in my sophomore year. So I I'd already gotten cut from baseball. Didn't have anything going on. Mm -hmm. uh, buddy of mine said, "Look, we don't have a goalie." Yeah. And he knew that I played. I was a backyard hockey goalie, a yeah. soccer goalie, growing up and whatever. And he said, "You should come out. You know, mm -hmm. you probably get to play a lot." Well. He also told that to two other guys. So the three of us go out there. We're like, what are you doing? I thought they said they didn't have anybody. But anyway, I didn't start playing lacrosse until my 10th grade year in high school mm -hmm. on the junior varsity team. Um, if that, if, if I had focused solely on baseball, would I have been better at baseball enough to make it? Sure. But I probably wasn't going anywhere. Right. I wasn't, I wasn't going to get drafted. There was none of that happening. Yeah. But with lacrosse, what happened was I ended up being okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't even start my sophomore year. Yeah. I played junior varsity my junior year. Mm -hmm. So I played down a, a level yeah. even even in my junior year because there was a senior and a junior already on varsity. Yeah. But I could have sat the bench mm -hmm. and been a third goalie on the varsity team, never sniffed the field, or yeah. I can go on junior varsity and play. Yeah. And I wanted to play. Yeah. So I made the decision. I played. And I was all right. Mm -hmm. My senior year, the other senior was already on the team. He started. I sat the bench. Didn't play. Yeah. Um. Oddly enough, the junior varsity coach that I played for, that I actually played for, ended up taking a job at a Division One college mm -hmm. down the road. Not being the brightest individual, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of college uh, applications or, or acceptances <laughs> going for me. Right. But oddly enough, the football coach at that school somehow worked something where I was able to get in as a place kicker. <laughs> I was probably the largest 
Well, I want to say the largest because I wasn't very tall. I was probably the roundest place kicker <laughs> in the entirety of Division One Double A. Like, which one's the ball? <laughs> right, right. Like when I, like if I were to be a punter. <laughs> Well, first of all, I couldn't be a punter. I tried punting. Mm -hmm. I can't catch the ball because mm -hmm. I got stone hands. So my <laughs> punting career went out the window. Um, but somehow I was able to get on. I was able to get on the team as a place kicker. Yeah. Now Division One AA, no scholarships. It wasn't like I was getting any assistance. Right. Um, but that was also where my junior varsity coach went to coach in college. Yeah. And he said, "Look, he goes, I can use you." Mm -hmm. I go, what do you mean use me? Like, I don't want to sit on the bench. I don't want to put in all this time and effort. He goes, no, I think you can come and you can start. Now, this is a guy I, I had never started on my varsity team in high school. Yeah. So, for me, this was, it was a huge surprise that he even brought this up. Mm -hmm. um, it ended up two years after I got to, to, to college, I ended up stopped playing football. And I had started my first two years as a freshman and sophomore. On a Division One lacrosse team, yeah, and I was—I couldn't believe any of this. Yep. Um, so, going back to what you were saying, though, if my parents had the option of putting me into a travel team, mm -hmm. whereas baseball only, yeah, full year round, yep, learning how to be somewhat of an athlete, which I, mean, I wasn't a good athlete at all. I, I mean, I worked, yeah, and enough to be okay at what I did. Yep. Good enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I found a niche. Yeah. But if I had gone and just done baseball and not done anything else, yeah, I wouldn't have had any of the footwork moves or, or, or anything that I would have learned from football or when I played uh, club soccer yep. over the over the summers and winters, indoor side, you know, just to do something, just to have something to do. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would have given me a chance to do what I ended up doing in college. Yeah, and that's it, it makes you a little bit more well rounded. It, it just doesn't. It, it it made it fun. Yeah, because I hadn't played three four seasons of just baseball or just lacrosse. I got to experience it all with with friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I, I played. Uh, so hockey was my sport, and I should have. I'm built more like an offensive lineman. I should have had I put the effort into football that I put into hockey. I'm not saying I would have gone anywhere crazy, but I would have played at a higher level than I ended up playing. But I never wanted to play football. I just wanted to play hockey. So we, we ended up going. And my, my mom and dad, they, they'd scrounge their pennies together and send me to this camp or that camp. And, you know, this uh, what was it? Select 17 was the big thing that USA Hockey did where they took all the 17-year-old players and you'd go through these tryouts. And I made it to a certain level. And then, you know, I, I was, you know, kid from the South, we're not – not big hockey areas. Now it's changed a little bit. Now there are kids from, from more diverse regions. But then if you weren't from Massachusetts or Michigan or Minnesota or something North Dakota, you weren't really going anywhere. Upstate New York, maybe. But, uh, well, you're practically Canadian from there. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. A yeah, hey, hey, comrades. Yeah, hey. yeah. you're drinking. You're drinking Molson. Yeah, yeah. You know, or, or Labatt Blue. Yeah, you're right. not drinking like, you know, you're not drinking the the Bud Light. The right. Bud Lights. You're yeah. drinking Genesee, mm -hmm. Keystone. <laughs> if you're from the if you're from that Pennsylvania yeah. area, yeah. Or you or you're uh, you're straight up going Labatt Blue or Molson. Yeah, yeah. And if you got lucky. Someone brought the Molson Triple X from Canada, <laughs> and you got you got a little stronger buzz. Look going. at that Molson Ice too. Didn't That's they right. Make that garbage. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I ended up. It was it was my junior year, it was the, the end of my junior year of high school. The old football coach was retiring, a new football coach was coming in. So he comes up and he sees me in the cafeteria and he says, "Hey," uh, and I kind of he was wearing the the football coach outfit. I knew who he was. Short shorts. He, yeah, the the jacket that said coach. The gym the gym teacher athletic shorts. Yeah. We all know what that is. Yeah. We don't have to explain that. No, no, don't have to explain <laughs> that. And and what he said, I was waiting for the you play any sports, and I'd say. So yeah, I play hockey, and they'd always say, "What are you wasting your time with that for?" But this guy didn't, and he said, well, "What do you play? You play football?" I said, "No, sir." And he said, uh, "Do you? Uh, he goes, what you play any sports?" So, yeah, I play ice hockey. He goes, "You ever think about football?" I said, "Not really, you know, because it just wasn't my thing." And he said, "Well, you know, if you uh, if you played football, it might get you in better shape for hockey." And I said, oh, "Never thought about it that way." So sure. So I played football my senior year of high school. Never played one snap of organized football prior to that. And uh, ended up going out and, and having fun, making a bunch of new friends, and ended up getting recruited and playing 
Division Three, but that was the thing where I was not locked into hockey. I didn't have parents. They, they supported me, and but they were realistic. They knew that it was for fun, that it was not for being drafted, you know. And I think that's where you get some of this craziness from because all these dads think that, hey, if if I go out and my kid hits ten thousand balls off the tee, that he's going to be the next you know, the, the next Bryce Harper, he's going to be the next, you know, he's going to be the next Tiger Williams. He's going to be the next, the next it thing. Well, it only gets worse though, because back when Tiger Woods came out, I mean, Earl Woods got vilified yeah. for how much he made Tiger play golf. Yeah. Now, obviously when Tiger grew up, he talked about that and said, Oh, it wasn't like that. You know, it, right. it, 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 or what about um, Venus and Serena, yep, I was Serena just say Richard that. Yep. Williams? Yeah. Venus and Serena Williams, father, he got the same criticism, and even now, Lavar Ball, yeah, that loudmouth dude, yeah, but criticize him all you want. He's got two boys in the NBA, yep. who are very good, yeah, and then a third one may or may not make it, but you get two out of three in, yeah, you're doing something right. But I don't agree with it. No, I don't agree with it because it's a very small group of people, yeah. That are going to go that route. Yep. And you hear about it happening with football with those quarterback camps and Steve Clarkson yep. out in California. Like, I think Aaron Rodgers was one of his, mm -hmm. the, the Palmer brothers, Carson and Jordan. Mm -hmm. Those guys went to Clarkson. Now, here's the thing, though. I don't know if they just played football, though. Yeah. I think they might have seen Clarkson on the side mm -hmm. along with their high school football team. Yeah. Now, out in California, you probably went to modern day or one of those private schools. But yeah. I, 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 I guess there could be an argument that it does work for a certain few kids. Right. But I think those kids were very specialized. They might not be the greatest athletes, but they might be good at what they do. Yeah. Because, I mean, Aaron Rodgers isn't probably going to win any pickup games. No, yeah. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. He, he's a quarterback. Yeah. Maybe not an athlete. Yeah. And, and look, I know I'm going to get hate for saying Aaron Rodgers isn't a, isn't an athlete. The guy's an athlete. The guy's an MVP quarterback. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, we'll get flamed in the comments section on that one. Right. But there are other quarterbacks that played the position very well. Yeah, that probably didn't didn't just focus on that, or or even the other positions for that matter. Yeah. I mean, look at I mean how many how many NFL players ran track. Yeah. And played football. Uh, and played Rod basketball. Yeah. Robert Griffin III sure. was a, I think, I don't know if he went to school on a track scholarship, but he ran track. And yeah. one of his big things is he didn't want to just be a track star that played football. Right. And, you know, that that was, he wanted to be a, you know, the, the whole, is he a pocket passer? No, he's not a pocket passer. Um, he could throw the ball. Yeah. When he was at Baylor, he threw a lot more than he ran. Yeah. And I think when he got to the NFL... I think he tried to be that dual threat quarterback. Yeah. And I don't think he ever was. Yeah. I think he could run. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was a running quarterback. I yeah. think it, if they would have put him in the systems that they had, let's say Jason Campbell in, mm -hmm. Jason Campbell from all, he was out of Auburn, was yeah. not a running quarterback. Yeah. If that dude didn't have eight to nine different offense coordinators in eight to nine years, oh, I think yeah. he would have been much better. Well, that, that but, team is a disaster, yeah. so they still are. But that's beside but, the point. Yeah, but the the thing is, like, but what you see now is that level of commitment that you'll, you'll see them. You know, we run a we we run a you know a college program here. We run a pro program here, but it's getting pushed lower and lower and lower. So ESPN is televising high school football games. On Friday nights. Right. Now, I like football. I don't watch them. I almost refuse to watch them because it's almost it's feeding the troll. It's encouraging it. Right. Um, you look at, you know, the way some of these programs, the uniforms they have. Um, there's a show on Netflix, I believe, about quarterbacks, and they all went to these private schools. I saw that, yeah. And, and these kids. Was it QB1? Yes. Something like that? Yep. Yeah. And some of them, it's funny because you watch the show and you're like, well, I kind of like this kid. I think the kid from uh, somewhere, I think he played in Harrisburg at, uh, maybe it was Bishop McDavid was the school. I liked him. He seemed like a nice kid, good family. Um, 
there was a kid that was from the South, somewhere in Alabama, somebody that he seen. But there was a kid that from Vegas who I could not stand him or his family or anyone involved in the school. What was the last name Harper? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Bryce Harper was from Vegas too. <laughs> yeah, no, he was. And and the the in, in fact, when the Capitals won the the Stanley Cup, he was wearing a Vegas Golden Knights jersey, and he played for the Nats. But that's neither here nor there. The thing is, <laughs> you're you're pushing that level further down. Well, at some point, these kids they need to learn how to do. They need to learn other things than football in school. Well, never in the burnout, though. Yeah. I mean, for every Tiger Woods, for every Venus and Serena, for every every uh, LaMelo ball yeah. or whatever the other ball name I is. I don't know any of them. How, how many hundreds or thousands of other kids had their relationship ruined with their parents? Yeah. Because the parents were so pushy. Yeah. With the sport. Yeah. And all the kid wanted to do was have fun. Yeah. And and I I you know, when I I never forget when I played hockey, I I was it was my senior year, I was playing football and I went to um I had a I was able to miss football practice to go to hockey tryouts. So go to tryouts. Now, I was in probably the best shape of ever because I was had just gotten done. A lot of the kids playing hockey, like and the thing is like back then people weren't training the way they are now. Like you have parents that are hiring personal trainers for their kids' sports. Are you out of your mind? And what is it like thirteen years old yeah. doing this? Yeah, they're doing like, it's thirteen. He should even be lifting at all. He probably doesn't even know what shoe he's putting on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you go and you I go to, to hockey trials and I was feeling good, played great. I was a goalie. I was the definitely outplayed all the other kids, but I they put me on the B team. So you had A and B, and I ended up on the B team. And I was like, why am I on the B team? Well, it turns out that the new coach was friends with a guy, and he'd said he'd help coach, but he wanted his kid to play on the A team. And I, was, I said, you know what? I don't need this. So I told my dad, I said, hey, uh, <clears throat> I, don't think I'm, I don't think I'm playing hockey this year. And he looked at me like bewildered, because for years, that's what we did. But he was happy because he didn't have to write that check. Right. <laughs> so I played for my high school team because I was the first year at a high school club hockey team. Had a blast. And then I ended up playing on a house league team, but I skated out as a forward and I played with some friends, of my, like a bunch of kids that I knew from around the rinks and, and from school and this that could never make the travel teams. And it was the most fun I've ever had playing hockey. It was an absolute blast because we were just kids playing hockey. It's a good and, story about that. So where I grew up, one of my friends, his, uh, his dad flattened his backyard. Oh, nice. And every winter, mm -hmm. right as we were starting to freeze, we would go and put the two by sixes out. Mm -hmm. So we had it was small boards just so the puck wouldn't fly. Yep. And we would go out with the hose and just and we'd freeze it over. Yep. Freeze it over. Yep. Like six, seven times to get that good initial yep. freeze going. And we would play three on three, four on four hockey games. Mm -hmm. And it, it, there was like probably six to seven that always came. Mm -hmm. And then of course. Yeah, it, small town. Yeah. So you get another three or four that come one day, another yeah. three or four that come another day. But from the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you had like six or seven. Yeah. So you always had a game. Yep. And we would stay up till two, three, uh, one, two in the morning. Yep. Just playing. Mm hmm And we'd always go and we make sure we ice it down after yeah. we're done. Yeah, have smooth ice. We, we, had to take sh we had to take shovel breaks. Yep. Because you got to shovel the shavings. Mm -hmm. You got to lay down a layer. Maybe you wait two, three hours and you get... In you know, game two. Yep. Game two's on. Mm -hmm. And for me, even as someone who who played organized sports at you know division one level. Yeah. That's probably the most fun I had. Yeah. And it wasn't any organized sport. It wasn't my best sport. It was the one that I just had fun with. Yeah. So I mean I think that's important as a kid though. Yeah. And and are we ruining and the thing is is it being ruined? Is that innocence? Is that fun being ruined by travel ball dad? Oh, one hundred percent. And that's and I. That's where it's coming from. Is is and anyone here who has kids or played sports knows exactly the person who I'm talking about. Um, and I'm I'm going to focus it specifically on baseball because that's my most recent experience with travel ball dad. But there's travel hockey dad. There's travel lacrosse dad. There's and it's the guy who thinks that he's watching his kid play in the major leagues yeah and that or that you know if the kid just does one thing differently he'll make 
the the major he'll he'll he, like it's just he's just a hair away and if i just push him a little bit more that he's going to get there and, and the guy he yells at the ump yes he, yep. he yells at the coach yeah and then of course he yells at the kid yeah and and the kid is devastated and travel ball dad always st- at, at a baseball field travel ball dad always stands on the fence and he'll have his hands up on the fence about ear level maybe higher one foot back and he's spitting seeds. Like, he's in the dugout at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> he's the GM. Yeah. Like, come on, He's, sc- he's scouting the opposition. Yeah. Like, you're you're a tool. Easy, and, easy Tommy. Yeah. You're, you're not going to the majors yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah, he's there, you know. All right, wait for your pitch. Wait for your pitch. Spit, spitting seeds. It's like, come on, dude. Like, relax. And I remember my parents used to... My, well, my mother stayed in the car and slept because it was an ice rink and it was warm. So she'd stay in the car where it was warm. No, um, sure. well, yeah. Come on now. My dad would sit at the very top of the the very last row of the bleachers and read a book. So that's what my parents did. They were not travel ball dad, but they yell at the little kids, and the kids see this. So they either reject the behavior, or that becomes their normal, and they just continue with it. Um, I was my oldest didn't make a travel team. Big deal. Whatever. He's. He's nine. <laughs> Who cares? It's nine you travel. Is there really a point to nine you travel? Right. They can't hit. They can't pitch. Uh, we're solidly in nose picking, chasing bugs, watching airplanes territory. But hey, we've got it. And I'm convinced that they simply that those programs exist only so that Travel Ball Dad can brag to his other friends about his kid that plays Travel Ball. Well, you know what? You know why they exist, right? So, ex Division One athlete mm-hmm. doesn't want to go coach. Doesn't want to doesn't want to put in the hard hours to go coach on a real team, work his way up. Yeah. So what he does is he creates a club team, mm-hmm. and knows he can charge the fifteen hundred dollars, and people are going to pay it because he's got that D one on his resume. Oh yeah. And people pay it. Yeah. And people pay it because they the sales pitch is amazing. The sales pitch is well, you know, I played D one. Yeah. You know, so I'll be able to talk to D one coaches. Yeah, so I know these I, people. I, I know my ex. I know my old coach over at X Y Z College. Yeah. So I've got an in. Yeah, and, and and it's such a disingenuous sale. Yeah, because if you have a roster, and I'm going to use lacrosse for example, if you have a roster of twenty kids, mm-hmm. there's no shot you're getting all twenty. Right on a D one scholarship, no, no. It's especially it, it, this is for lacrosse parents if they're hearing me. Yeah, most teams have sixteen scholarships mm-hmm. total. Yeah, for a forty to fifty man roster. Yeah, I think the cap for Division one for for lacrosse scholarships is sixteen. Now I could be wrong; it might be up to twenty now. Yeah, but your best case scenario, mm-hmm. if if your kid. Is the top kid in the nation. Yep. He might get that full ride. Yeah. Most of the other kids, and I'm going to say the other 30, Mm -hmm. are going to get a quarter scholarship apiece. Yeah. The other 20 or 10 will get nothing. Yeah. They'll get acceptance. You'll get acceptance into the school. Yeah. And that's the dream. But but that's the dream they push. They're saying, oh, no, no, no. You're, you're, I know people. I'll get your kid. Yeah. A scholarship. Yep. And nine and, and probably I'd say eighty percent of those kids that he's gonna get on this travel team after he's made his ten grand per family yep. over eight years on being on this travel team, mm-hmm. he's gonna get you nothing. Yeah. Two or three kids and the thing is parents can see which two or three kids are gonna get those scholarships. Yeah. If it's not your kid, stop paying the money. Yeah. If your kid isn't that kid, just Going through defenders like hot knife through butter, mm-hmm. your kid isn't the one. Yeah. So stop paying the $1,500 yeah. and let the kid go have fun. Yeah. And and the kids, they think that they're helping their kids. And the kids, you, you ask it. If you ask 15 year old me what he wanted to, what he was going to be doing at, at 20, it would have been, oh, I'm, you know, probably playing D1 college hockey somewhere. Oh, who knows? Maybe I'll get drafted out of high school. That's that's what kids do. Kids dream about that stuff because they're children. Well, the parents then buy into that, and they want to support that. So then the, these disingenuous coaches go and sell them their their 
dreams coming true. Well, I think they sell the parents more than the kids, though. Yeah. And the, 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 the kids... Parents are, the parents are like, oh, especially the fathers, right? Yeah. Oh, my kid can walk in my shoes. Because let's, let's say it's an X-Division one dad, right? Yeah. Oh, my, this is the way for my kid to do it. Yeah. The problem is, like, when you made your rise that's not how you did it no you played with your friends and were good and and you played multiple sports you you rounded yourself out without your parents breathing down your neck yep without them forcing forcing this stuff when i when i was playing baseball growing up my dad was the coach Mm -hmm. right but not the coach that like put me on a pedestal and put me like he didn't put me on the pitcher's mound yeah Like, like he's like no he goes I need a left fielder tonight because we only got eight. We only got nine kids. You're playing left field. Yeah. Or my dad was like, you're batting ninth because Johnny's dad over there was giving me an earful. So you, so I don't get blamed for playing favorites. You can bat ninth tonight. Oh yeah. When, when, yeah, it's funny because you being the coach's kids hard. Cause I know a, a lot, a lot of times it's harder than being the, the non coaches kid, but what happens with these these so the parents buy into this stuff and they make their kids do it and they go and you know it's it's not for you know what's what's the what is the 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 point of it are they living vicariously through them but like what are the chances of them actually going pro right. in any of the major sports leagues well i mean i think the stats are that it's one percent of high school kids play in college, mm-hmm. or maybe it's one percent play Division One college. Or yeah. actually, I think it's, I think it was all three levels. Mm-hmm. I think it's one percent of high school athletes play in Division One, two, or three college. Yep, and one percent of those athletes play in pros. Yeah, it, it's the longest of long. It's a lottery ticket at yeah. that point. Yeah, but yeah, I'd be really interested to hear what listeners have to say on this topic. So, if you can leave comments or. Um, or any kind of feedback that'd be great our website is uh, dumbideapodcast.com you can reach out to us there and hopefully uh, you come back for episode 3